What's going on everyone? This is EDC for fun. Thanks for checking out the video. Today we are going to do a quick breakdown of the Urban EDC F5.5. All right guys, so this is a knife that I've had about a year now. Um, it is a little bit on the smaller side. I wasn't sure how I felt about it when they first came out. I had heard it was small. I saw the measurements. Um, I knew it was on a little bit on the smaller side. Here it is next to a pair of three and a PM2. Um, so I initially passed it up, but then when I saw they dropped this um, Segaha milling pattern, I was um, infatuated. <laughs> I had wanted uh, something, not necessarily in Segaha, but something with a cool milling pattern um, for a little while and saw some that were okay. But when this one came out, I was like, you know what? That is just right up my alley. So I went ahead, pulled the trigger. So this is a knife made by Riot for Urban EDC, designed by Jesper Voxnez. Um, he's a um, icon in the knife world, uh, knife designs. Uh, going back for years and years for companies across the board, everywhere from uh, Boker to Fox to Urban EDC, um, Giant Mouse, um, there's a ton. Uh, MKM, Viper, um, brands that I don't even have any experience with. Um, and so, yeah, he's definitely, um, definitely made a name for himself, and I think he absolutely nailed it. Uh, with this one in particular. Like I said, it is on the small side. You can see closed up, it's actually smaller than that pair of three. It actually works really well. The way on the butt of the handle here, you see it tapers back. You can actually get a fourth finger on there and it doesn't feel so bad. If you're uh, including the tail of the knife, then to the inside, you've got about three and a half inches and you get about two and a three quarters cutting edge. So under three inches, um, you do have this big choil here. I don't really um, like calling that a finger choil. If you can see, yes, you can get your finger in there, but you are right up against the edge of that blade. I've done it, lots of people do it. It's not necessarily the safest thing to do. Um, it works great for sharpening, uh, but you know, as far as getting your finger in there, if you're just cutting, you know, paper <laughs> or maybe some cardboard, sure. Um, but outside of that, you know, I don't, I don't think it's a good place to put your, to, to put your finger. Now you can see there's some jimping up here on the top of the blade. Um, this is really a really fantastic grip right here if you're doing. Uh, some utility cuts. This works great for that, especially with the sheep's foot blade. You've got a little bit of upsweep, uh, but not so much that you can't get the tip down without raising the knife all the way up. Um, so when you're when you're doing a utility cut, you only have to really bring it up, you know, a few degrees um, versus some knives that have a really big upsweep, uh, big belly. You've got to get all the way up like that to do a utility type cut. Um, so this works really well, especially with that jimping up there. And yeah, you can get your thumb up there too. So if you're doing, you know, like a push cut, that helps for that as well. So you can see the blade stock is, um, it's not thin either. It's about an eighth of an inch, but you have a nice tall blade. And so it gives it a lot of opportunity to thin out at the edge. And it gets really thin behind the edge and it is very, very slicey, but it still gives you a lot of stability out to the tip because of the sheep's foot design. You can see it carries a lot of that thickness all the way out to the tip. And that's awesome. This blade, by the way, is M390. And uh, my experience with um, this particular uh, M390, it is um, fantastic. It's it held a fine edge for a long time. Um, I don't really have any metrics on that because I don't really do that. Um, and uh, it still has a really good working edge. It's lost that fine edge. Um, I've you know hit it with um, uh, the ceramic rods just to um, you know clean up the edges a little bit and you know strapped it here and there, um, but haven't actually sharpened this thing. I'm probably going to go ahead and sharpen it after I do this little tune up. 
um, but it still cuts. Um, of course, it could be better, so I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that uh, in a bit here. So looking at the body construction, we've got this uh, Segaha milling pattern, obviously, which looks fantastic. And you can see how clean and crisp that mill work is. And we're basically on uh, stonewashed, or it could be bee blasted, titanium, but just everything about it is just executed extremely well. You can see the chamfers going around. Everything's flush except for those two screws in the uh, pocket clip, but the pocket clip itself you see is recessed. I like this um, work they did around the uh, the two body screws there, the back spacer. Everything is just, look at that crisp little chamfer there. Everything's finished so nicely. Got a nice uh, large diameter pivot screw, which is also flush. Basically a seamless transition there. And look at the way the blade tucks inside there. It just looks fantastic. The fit and finish is really, really impressive. The backspacer you can see incorporates a lanyard hole there. So yeah, uh, this has uh, just been an absolute joy to carry and to use. And uh, yeah, it just needs a little bit of loving. So we're going to go ahead and do that. this over here where we have our lock up now this is a titanium liner but it does not have a steel insert so you actually do have titanium and steel meeting here which most of the time when you have um, titanium and steel um, Manufacturers like to put a steel insert there um, just to prolong the life. And I've heard Kevin from Lefty EDC say that Riot is the only company that he would trust to make a titanium liner lock that does not have a steel insert. So we'll get that cleaned up and see what the wear looks like. So you can definitely see some wear there. Let's see what the steel looks like. Yeah, it's got a little bit of wear, but obviously it's pretty much unfazed compared to the titanium. Yep, that's why you put steel inserts on there. So you have steel on steel lockup. So eventually, <clears throat> I think my lockup is at like 50, 40, 50% right now. So it's gonna eventually just work its way over. It's fine. This isn't really a hard use knife. You're not taking this knife out to the woods. <laughs> so I did wanna do a comparison of, like I said, this is a titanium liner lock with no steel insert. This is a titanium frame lock that does have a steel insert. And you can see there is some wear there but it's not as dramatic as this so we have the knife all cleaned up edge has been touched up we're going to go ahead and put this thing back together and wrap this thing up Okay, so we are centered, we are secure, we are clean, we got a fresh edge, and uh, this knife is just absolute fire. <laughs> I really like it a lot. Urban EDC is about to do a drop of this knife on Wednesday the 11th, so they're doing the Sagaha milling pattern, but with anodized blurple titanium. 
Um, it looks awesome. I'm probably not going to get one. I just don't have the funds to. Um, and I don't think I really want two of these. Um, but it's definitely a great knife if you can afford it. And you like this design and this style, uh, now's a good opportunity to grab one of those and you will absolutely love it. It is a fun knife, it is a functional knife, and it's just been a real pleasure to have this knife in my collection. So with that being said, I wanna thank everybody for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day. God bless you, I love you guys. See you on the next one.